Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, what we're going to be talking about is the top 10 Active Directory attack methods. So I'm actually going off of an, uh, a website called Lapide. So we're going to go through these top 10 and then a little definition behind each one. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome. Please like, subscribe, and share. Of course, if you find the information informative, and if you guys are coming back for some fun, let's learn some more. So there is a lot of ways to attack Active Directory for you know, internal pen testing, but we're going to go through these top 10. And, you know, there's some other ones like crack map exec and, you know, doing pass the hash stuff. But I want to go through these and break it down, right? So the first one is Cobrosing, right? So the second one is password spraying. And we're going to go through each, each one in a minute. And the next one is LLMNR poisoning, which is the local loopback multicast name resolution. We have pass the hash with Mimikatz. We can use Mimikatz for that. We have default credentials. So a lot of organizations use default credentials to log into some systems, some applications. And if we find out, get those default credentials, um, and we can just log into devices and stuff like that. So always change your, your password if it's default. Hard-coded credentials. So a lot of software developers, what they'll do is hard code in their code, some of the username and password. So if someone gets access to that code, they can see the credentials that were hard coded, but we'll get deeper into these. The next one is Privesk, Privilege Escalation. Then we have LDAP Reconnaissance, which is some fun stuff. And then the next one we have is Bloodhound, enumeration for Active Directory. And then last one here, number 10, is ntds.dit extraction. Okay. So the first one is cobrosing. So cobrosing attacks targets uh, service accounts that by exploiting the SPN, which is the service principal name. You know, so in your Active Directory, if you have your, you know, your service account published through the SPNs, you know, in Active Directory, that uh, that, that object is obviously exposed. So yeah, so as an adversary, you know, we can try to target these accounts and change the SPN values and, you know, to whatever we want to do, right? So the next one we said was password spraying. It's very obvious. It's taking a password list, spraying it around the network and see if anything sticks and if we get any successes. And we can use like, like I said, crack map exec. We have a username and a password against a subnet of for an example, 172.16.10.0 slash 24. So we just spray everything uh, uh, across that network, or if we have a specific server that we want to attempt to um, grant access to, okay? So the next one is LLMNR. So this will be, you know, we'll use a tool like Responder, you know, so we'll listen in for any kind of, uh, you know, incoming connections. So in the Windows world, we have this network function that puts Active Directory at risk, right? This is so, so critical. So LLMNR allows the name resolution without any requirement of DNS. So without a DNS server, I can resolve whatever I'm trying to, you know, listen out for. And it, multi, you know, uses multicast. So multicast packets are broadcast to the network, asking the IP address, what is that host name? You know, see if it gives you a host name. And if it doesn't, you know, it, it's cool because, you know, the, like it says here, this feature isn't necessarily a DNS, you know, properly configured service, right? So it's pretty dangerous. And I think I demonstrated like when you, when I use a responder, that's a tool that you would use for LLMNR poisoning. So the next one here was pass the hash with Mimikatz. Say, for example, now we got the hash with Responder. And now what we can do is take that hash, throw it around the network with Mimikatz, and see if it sticks. So pass the hash is a technique used with stolen credentials. So say, for example, we compromise your credentials from AD. Now we can try to move laterally, lateral movement throughout the environment. So, you know, as an attacker or as an adversary, we'll use a tool called Mimikatz. And this will exploit the L 
TLM authentication protocol to impersonate that user and dump the credentials from memory. Okay, so it's super, super critical. All right, so default credentials, obviously that's pretty obvious. A lot of companies, for example, you have a router or a firewall or something in your environment, and maybe you have admin admin or Cisco Cisco or whatever, whatever. Now with those credentials, if you never change them as an adversary, we are going to grant access to your device and we can you know, do some funky business, right? So you wanna always make sure you get that default credentials changed up to date, always have your devices patch and have an inventory of your you know, hardware and software. It'll definitely re remediate that for sure. All right, the next one is hard-coded credentials. And like I said, in some cases, software developers will you know, hard code these credentials into a script. You know, obviously this is a security risk because if I got, you know, for a source code review or a application pen test, what if as an app pen tester, we get a hold of that code and now we, you know, as a developer, they reveal the credentials because they're too lazy to put it into a, you know, a security vault or a password vault or whatever, right? So yeah, and I'll put this link in the description, or you can just Google the top 10 um, Active Directory hacks or attacks. Okay, so the next one here is Privesk. Privesk escalation is super critical if you're doing an internal pen test. And this will pretty much, you know, we gain access to a standard user, right? Joe Blow is, you know, a low privilege user. So what we can do now is if the account is poorly configured or whatever, we can exploit maybe a password policy or a password practice that maybe they only have, you know, six characters or whatever, or easy passwords like spring 2023 or summer 2023 since the summer's coming up, right? And a lot of people do just change that and you'll be surprised. Like I've compromised so many accounts just by like winter 2022, you know, fall 2023, or maybe you know, something 2023 bang or exclamation point or whatever the case may be, because they have to add another character or whatever. And with a password list, we can obviously, you know, make those changes and throw that at whatever we were trying to uh, compromise. So another, you know, another thing organization must do is maintain up-to-date inventory, like I said, uh, accounts. So say, for example, if someone left the organization, don't leave that account lingering out there because I've seen organizations, they have active accounts from 2017, 2020, and what domain admin rights? Maybe it was an old system admin, or maybe it was just someone that is in smaller organizations, they just make people domain admin so it's easier to maintain and manage. I don't know. I can't speak on them, but always, if you, you don't need domain admin credentials, if you don't need domain admin rights, don't give anyone domain admin rights, only for your actual administrators. Um, the, least, the least amount of DA accounts out there, the better, okay? So, you know, accounts must have the least privilege. You know, if you need to create an account or whatever to have King Kong rights, go ahead and do that. But don't, you know, don't give your, everyone and their mother, you know, DA credentials, All right? So the next one is LDAP, LDAP reconnaissance, right? So adversaries who already gained access to your Active Directory environment can use LDAP queries, right, to gather further information about the environment. So you can use PowerShell scripts. You can do, use a whole bunch of uh, stuff. So using this method, they can discover groups, users, computers. Obviously, that, that for me will have me plan the next step in my uh, you know, my pen test or my attack, right? So preventing LDAP reconnaissance is tricky. It is super tricky because most of the, most of the information in Active Directory is available to all the users, right? So you just have to pay close attention to all your traffic that traverses over LDAP, which is port 389. And just make sure you're, you know, monitoring your stuff. And we'll get to the monitoring and reconnaissance and all that stuff. Oh, remediation, not reconnaissance. So the next one is Bloodhound Reconnaissance, right? So you've seen me use Bloodhound maybe in some hack-the-box machines or just, 
you know, I think I installed Bloodhound. And what this is, is a, an enumeration tool that's going to go ahead and do some recon against your um, Active Directory. So what is this? This tool helps adversaries identify the attack path in Active Directory. So maybe we need to have the shortest path to the DA account, right? So this tool works by creating a map of the computers that are available, right? So for each user, for uh, what the user credentials can be stolen in memory, you know, there, there's a whole bunch of things that we can, and as an organization as well, we can use this tool to help identify and fix vulnerabilities in the environment too. So it's not only for an adversary or a pen tester, but you can also use it as a tool for, for the good. It's always for the good. Because you should always have um, permission to do everything and anything in an environment when you're doing a pen test. Okay, so the last one here, number 10, is LDAP, excuse me, ntds.did extraction, right? So domain controllers store Active Directory data in a file called the ntds.did file. So if I compromise this, if I get a hold of this, we're going to have a field day, right? So by default, it's located in your C, Windows, NTDS. So if an adversary gains access to your Active Directory, they have access to your NTDS.did file or compromise, you know, maybe a backup solution, maybe if you're using Veeam, Windows backup, whatever backup, if we're able to get to that file, it's going to be a bad day. So you should always minimize the amount of accounts that have access that can log into your domain controller to be able to access these physical domain controllers so they have less access to the ntds.dit file, right? So obviously to harden this situation, make sure you only have a limited access to your domain controllers to log in and stuff like that, right? So like I said, I got this from Lapide. So using Lapide, you know, you can use this tool to prevent Active Directory attacks when protecting the, you know, accounts and data. And I use Lapide. I actually, a company that I work for, um, you know, they use Lapide. Uh, so I'm pretty familiar with the tool. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome tool. So it is important to remember, you know, that visibility, visibility is key. If you have visibility into your environment, you're winning, right? So you always need a solution to pay close attention and monitor your Active Directory environment or any kind of anomalies and any kind of adversaries or attacks. But yeah, so hopefully this video has been informative for you guys. This is the top 10 Active Directory attacks. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment in the description below. And I really appreciate you guys checking us out. And thank you so much for viewing. And until next time, have a beautiful day.